Fantasy football drafts come in all shapes and sizes, but lucky for you, I have 10 tips that will help you dominate your league regardless of the specific scoring format and rules. Let's get after it. Draft tip number one, don't be a hero in the early stages of drafts. Look, I'm not saying you can't go out there and get your guys. You can take your RB7 ahead of the perceived RB6 in terms of ADP. What I'm trying to say is that in the early stages of drafts, ADP is going to be far more reliable than once we get into the double digit rounds. Think of it like the NFL draft. We have a pretty good idea of the sorts of players that should be going in the first round. But once we get to day two and day three, who the hell knows what is going on? So again, first couple rounds of the drafts really shouldn't be reached on anybody going more than 12 picks past ADP wait for later to do that because again you should have a much better chance of getting your guy to fall back to you relative to what the ADP is saying in the early stages of drafts compared to when things get late draft tip number two be like water Hero RB, Robust RB, Zero RB, these are all fine strategies when deployed correctly, but predetermining what you're going to do before a draft even starts is an easy way to miss out on specific value that might only be available in your specific draft. Listen to the late great Bruce Lee and be like water. I'm not saying you should completely throw draft strategy out the window, but rather be willing to scoop up massive ADP values that maybe didn't fit your original pre-draft plan, but now living in the moment, you can see that you have the opportunity to build a far stronger core than even previously thought. This can give you an opportunity to really fill whatever holes you might have later in the draft with cheaper archetypes, but differentiating that lineup early and taking advantage of a draft room that inexplicably gives you some great early round value, that's a situation I do not want to make a habit of passing up. I'll have more information on some of those aforementioned cheaper archetypes in just a few more tips. Draft tip number three, don't hate the player, hate the ADP. Fantasy football managers regularly enter drafts saying no. Never again. I got burnt last year. I am not drafting this guy again. But guys, the thing is, you drafted him at a 2022 ADP, and because of the exact reasons that now upset you, they are available for a fraction of the cost in 2023. This is one of the best ways to identify post-hype sleepers in all of fantasy football land, and I have two specific examples that I really believe fit the bill ahead of 2023. First up, Commander's RB, Antonio Gibson. I know guys, we've been waiting for that DC CMC esque role to emerge for quite some time, but Gibson could never quite get the targets necessary due to the presence of JD McKissick, who is now a free agent, but from 2020 to 2022, averaged more targets per game than any running back not named Alvin Kamara, Austin Eckler, or Christian McCaffrey. No, Gibson is not going to be completely taking over this backfield as long as Brian Robinson is healthy and ready to go. But at the same time, guys, in full PPR scoring, we want that sort of pass down role that Gibson now has firmly in his possession. And we're looking at a player now regularly going outside the top 100 picks who was going at pick 58 in drafts this time last year. That's the definition of buying a player closer to their floor than their ceiling. And player number two, Bills wide receiver Gabriel Davis. It seemed like his ceiling was the freaking moon after that four touchdown playoff performance against the Chiefs, but he couldn't quite pay off his low end wide receiver two ADP last year and finished as the wide receiver 38 in PPR points per game. Oh, where is he being drafted now? As a borderline wide receiver three that he already finished as last year. At this point, guys, Gabe Davis remains cemented as the Buffalo Bills number two wide receiver in an offense that has the single most expected PPR points per game at the position over the past three years. Give Davis a little bit of slack for playing the majority of last season with a high ankle sprain. It sure seems like in 2023, he'll have a much better chance at meeting that sky high potential. And now he's a fraction of the cost of what he was this time last year. Draft tip number four, injury prone and already injured are two completely different things. Shout out to my guy, Dr. Edwin Porras for largely dispelling the idea that players can be inherently more injury prone than others. But guys, when you are already banged up going to the season, we do need to take notice. There are a handful of active injury situations around the league that are most likely impacting their ADP to an extent that you could potentially get a value if they drop far enough. 
First up, Arizona Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray, who is starting the season on the pup list as he continues to recover from last year's ACL injury. We also have Joe Burrow still dealing with that lingering calf issue, but it's not expected to impact his early season performance. At running back, we do have a suspension with Alvin Kamara out for three weeks, and it would also make sense if Javante Williams and Brees Hall are eased back into action a little bit while they recover from their own personal knee injuries. Also keep in mind Brown's RB2, Jerome Ford, is actively dealing with a hamstring issue. At wide receiver, there are three main injuries to be aware of. Jerry Judy, Terry McLaurin, and Jackson Smith and the Jigba are at risk of missing some early season time. And of course, we will also not have Jamison Williams for the first six games of the 2023 season while he serves his gambling-related suspension. I'm not saying you can't draft these guys at their reduced cost. If anything, I like targeting these players at, at the right price point thanks to the reality that they're going to be ranked far higher once they're actually back out on the field. Moral of the story, be aware of these injuries and don't be that guy drafting a now injured player at his previous non-injured ADP. Draft tip number five, take an extra five minutes before your draft just to make sure you got the league's rules and roster settings fully under control. I'm not going to name names here, guys, but I have participated in a handful of quote-unquote fantasy experts drafts over the years, and in consecutive seasons, I have seen people I truly respect in the industry draft a non-QB at first overall in a super flex format before fully admitting that they did not realize it was a super flex format. So from third round reversal to tight end premium scoring to one wide receiver starting, there are many, many things that can radically change your draft strategy and there's no one to blame but yourself if you're not able to figure that out before your draft. Draft tip number six, ask yourself, what can I get now that I cannot get later? This is a good question for every single round and allows us to go back to our previous draft tip of trying to be like water and adjusting on the fly to secure great values in the early rounds, but get cheaper archetypes of some of those positions at a reduced cost later. I have three key archetypes that I believe help accomplish this very task. Archetype number one, high ceiling dual threat quarterbacks. You're gonna see the top dogs going in round three that fit this mold. Mahomes, Allen, Hurts, Lamar. I'm okay taking them there if we already have the tier drop off at running back and wide receiver, but if not, I'm immediately turning my attention to the mid to late round options like the Sean Watson, Anthony Richardson, Daniel Jones, and Geno Smith, who are ranked where they are for a reason, but at the same time provide middle-class man's version of the same sort of dual threat alien level upside that has those aforementioned quarterbacks ranked up in round three in the first place. Archetype number two, inefficient running backs who might be in bad offenses who we are purely drafting based on that sweet, sweet volume. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a shot at Najee Harris going in round three because guys, if that's the archetype we're looking for, why not wait literally 50 plus picks later and start looking at guys like James Conner and Rashad White. I also think that Cam Akers and Miles Sanders provide similar archetypes as Najee Harris at a far reduced cost. Don't hate the player, hate the ADP. Right now, I hate Najee Harris's ADP. Archetype number three, tight ends with a legit chance to lead their offense and targets. Now, Travis Kelsey in round one, Mark Andrews in round three. I'm not saying you can't ever draft them, but guys, from the beginning of the offseason to present day, Darren Waller has always stood out as the cheaper version of those two, thanks to his status as the undisputed number one pass game option and a Giants offense led by former Chiefs coordinator Mike Kafka, who I would say knows a thing or two about featuring a talented tight end as the focal point of his passing game. Now, the price on Waller has rose quite a bit in August, but I am still firmly in on him at the round five ADP compared to using a top 36 pick on either Kelsey or Andrews. Just to be clear, I'm not saying you can't take the more expensive archetypes listed, but guys, if we can get a pretty similar fantasy asset at a far reduced cost, come on, sign me up for that. Draft tip number seven, upside is everything, especially in the later stages of drafts. This goes hand in hand with my general guideline that you should look to draft five wide receivers inside of the first nine rounds, because after that, we start looking at complementary wide receivers who, 
could work out. I can't predict the future every single time, but you're gonna have a much harder time figuring out when to start them, as opposed to some of the handcuffed running backs available who are just one injury away from being featured on the cover of the next week's waiver wire column. Some of my personal favorites regularly going outside the top 10 rounds of drafts include Tank Bigsby, Jalen Warren, Kenneth Gainwell, Chuba Hubbard, Kareem Hunt, Zamir White. The list honestly goes on and on, and I'm not saying that each of those guys is guaranteed to be a smash, but exposing yourself to enough fragile running back situations should give you at least one or two to hit eventually, which will be a hell of a lot more valuable than simply a complimentary wide receiver expecting to be buried on your bench for most of the season. This idea of chasing upside takes us to draft tip number eight. Kyler Murray is the best kept keeper secret of 2023. I know guys, he's starting on the pup list, still recovering from that knee injury, gonna cost him at least four games, and I will admit that it's not outside the realm of possibility that Kyler does not play football in 2023. That said though, guys, he's being priced right now outside of the top 50 running backs, the top 75 wide receivers, and more times than not the top 20 tight ends. We're not picking players at this stage to draft anyway who we're expecting to give us, you know, early season goodness regardless. So with Kyler, you have a player that could feasibly return this year. And if he returns, we have a player who has never been anything other than a fantasy friendly QB one during his four seasons as a pro. And worst case, you draft him, you put him in your IR spot. He doesn't even take up a roster spot and you have the possibility of keeping him at a fraction of the cost that he will be next year regardless regardless of where he starts. If you take one thing away from this video, guys, it's that an IR eligible keeper formats definitely draft Kyler Murray in the last few rounds because no player at that stage of the draft offers his same best case scenario in both 2023 and especially 2024. Draft tip number nine, take the New Orleans Saints DST in the final two rounds of fantasy drafts, if at all possible. I'm not saying they're the single best DST out there. That honor has to go to the 49ers and the Eagles, but they are almost always going to be gone before the final two rounds of fantasy drafts. The New Orleans Saints become the best pick after those two juggernauts thanks to their combination of being pretty damn good in real life and more importantly, having an incredible opening schedule. Seriously guys, this schedule could not be softer. We're talking about an opening six game stretch against the Titans, the Panthers, the Packers, the Buccaneers, the Patriots, and the Texans. Hell, even once we get to week seven, we're talking about a home Thursday night game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, because if you can stomach that, then we get two more great matchups against Anthony Richardson and Justin Fields, who might be pretty damn good in their own rights, but because of their mobility, do expose themselves more often than not to a bunch of sacks, which is what we're looking for in Fantasyland. Saints DST, the single best late round option at the position in 2023. And finally, draft tip number 10, have fun. It's fantasy football. How could we not have fun? We live on a rock that floats around a ball of fire. Society and life is so ridiculous as it is. If you can't have fun playing fantasy football, where else can you? From bragging rights over your friends to making fun of your friends when they mess up, there are opportunities each and every week to have a great time. So why not go ahead and do it? Appreciate you guys tuning in these 10 draft tips. Let me know in the comments where you think maybe I'm a little off base and let me know what you guys think some of the top tips are ahead of 2023. Most importantly, guys, good luck in your fantasy football drafts this year. It's always a great day to be great.